pleasure to welcome a beautiful, charming, and very effective professor and the chair of management and science at Stanford, Elizabeth Pate Cornell. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You have been at this program for some time. You've actually nurtured the program. Uh, before I ask other questions, I want you to talk to us about your program. The department that I currently chair is called Management Science and Engineering, and it's the result of a merger that occurred about 10 years ago between Operations Research Industrial Engineering and Engineering Economic Systems. Now, one of the essential parts of that program is our, uh, the part on entrepreneurship, which is also shared with the School of Engineering, the Stanford Technology Ventures Program. It is headed by Tom Byers. Tina Sealing is uh, the executive director and Professor Kathy Eisenhardt directs the research. It's an essential part of our department because it's entrepreneurship in engineering. And what's important about it is that uh, the objective is to make sure that people who have the technology, who have developed the technology, also have the knowledge that it takes to start their own company and to make it work in that world without attending necessarily a business school. So the objective is to promote entrepreneurship, teach entrepreneurship, and make sure that we nurture these, uh, these talents that are going to um, blossom in the Silicon Valley. This is very unique to Silicon Valley and especially to Stanford. Yes. Previously, it was only the business schools who took this initiative for entrepreneurship. Yes. Now we moved it and we are asking about engineering schools to not only teach about science and technology, but to become entrepreneurs. How is it so different here compared to, let's say, Western Europe? Oh, uh, first let me say this is a bottom-up bottom initiative in the sense that it's the engineers themselves who asked to get that kind of training, that kind of education. So it comes from a request from the base. So, main difference from Europe. It's perhaps an entrepreneurship spirit, which is not to say, of course, that the Europeans are not great entrepreneurs, uh, but the climate is different. Governments play a more important role, uh, both from a nurturing point of view, because they uh, put money into it, but also they regulate the markets much more. So is it more difficult to start a company in Europe than in the US? I would say yes, it's more difficult in Europe. And uh, education in Europe, for the moment, and I do not perhaps know all the, uh, the, the nooks and crannies of the educational systems, but I do not believe that they have yet quite reached the stage where uh, schools of engineering really have the same kind of entrepreneurship programs. They do have some sort of business programs, but it's less towards uh, young uh, companies trying to blossom. So the Silicon Valley, of course, uh, is unique. Many uh, places and many countries have tried to reproduce it. I understand that in some Chinese universities, they have tried uh, to get a program similar to ours, but it's still work in progress. And we are working in progress. You know, as an academician, you have a global perspective as well, especially being from France and being at Stanford. You get students from all over the world. Uh, especially in the emerging economies, there is a bit of a challenge because the culture is very different. Do you see those challenges when students come from those countries and they want to inculcate the spirit of entrepreneurship and take it back? Yes, it's a cultural challenge. So generally, first, we don't get just about any students. We get students who already want to come and be educated in this country. So the challenge is more to show them how to do it, not only in this country, but also how to take back home something that can be applied to their environment. So I would say that's one of the challenges. Another big difference in mentality is that I see is the attitude towards failure. It has been told many times, but it is true that in this country, failure is not a stigma. Well, failure is not good. And failure is not something that you write on your resume with great pride. Nonetheless, the understanding is that you learn from your failures. In Europe, I would say that it's more of a, a stigma, and you have failed. Generally, it's going to take a long time, not to say an infinite time, to get back in the saddle. I have one last question. It's a tough environment. It's technology and management you teach. How do you keep yourself so charming all the time? I'm not sure I'm charming all the time, but uh, I think that you are born 
being what you are, and you don't necessarily change because you study and practice engineering. And that's something that I would like to say to young women around the world. You can be an engineer and you don't have to look like a male, which would be quite fine if you were a male, but <laughs> if you are not, you don't have to shift your personality. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you.